Hey everybody, it's Frankie Slauson, and uh, welcome to another edition of the Frankie Slauson Show. And I'm with, uh, for, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to say a guy who is currently in the pro wrestling business, because he still is, even though uh, he ain't in the WWF anymore, or ECW, or, or WCCW, World Class Championship Wrestling, but he still in, is in the business. You guys remember him as the original Dort the Clown from back in the day. Uh, from tw nearly 20 years ago, which is hard to believe, but his real name is Matthew Wade Osborne, and uh, welcome to the show. Hey, buddy. Sean, it's a pleasure, man. I'm, uh, I'm down in Fort Smith, Arkansas right now. I'm, I'm working down here for um, a wrestling company, a phenomenal wrestling co independent wrestling company, uh, Traditional Championship Wrestling, TCW, and uh, did a, a press conference at uh, the Hooters tonight, and... Uh, there's two shows Friday and Saturday night. Um, tomorrow night, I am wrestling um, Tommy Dreamer uh -huh. in the main event, and uh, and then uh, Saturday night I've got a title a title match uh, the in, in, uh, in the Intercontinental or, or uh, uh, geez what title is that uh, <laughs> Independent Championship uh, title okay. uh, held by Tim Storm on Saturday night. So. I, I got a I got a big weekend in front of me here that I just kicked off here about two hours ago and and uh, you know and I'm doing this with you and it's awesome and um, well I got a big day tomorrow so you know I'm gonna make sure I get some good sleep tonight. Oh yeah, I got I got to kick Tommy Dreamer's ass tomorrow night. <laughs> Uh, and, and I think that's pretty cool that you got that uh, that you're still in the business after all these years, you know, of wrestling professionally in in major uh, companies to still have the love for it to to still be able to do it. Hey, you know what? I, I I've been blessed with my health, even though I've uh, had moments where, you know, uh, you know, life was getting to me <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. the world, but. Uh, but you know what? I survive, and I'm still kicking. I'm still doing what I do, and and uh, I'll uh, I'll probably die doing it. You know, who knows? I don't know, but uh, but I just know that I uh, that I feel at home when I'm in the ring, and uh, and if that's uh, if that's what I got to do to 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 feel that way, then then that's what I'm going to do. Oh yeah, I mean, you, you gotta stick with what you know, and it, and I think it's just re really cool because you you're not working like at a grocery store to make a living. You're you're actually doing. Well, well actually, actually, I'm a mortgage underwriter as well. So, oh, okay. You know, I, mean, I, uh, you know I, I I I do have an education, and uh, and I am lucky enough to to have a have a decent job uh, working for a mortgage company, and and so it's all good. You know, I work remotely from home, uh -huh. and uh, I do well. You know, I don't have to wrestle. I uh, I do it because I love it, and uh, it keeps me alive. Oh yeah, or it's killing me. One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you you built such a legacy for yourself. I'm surprised that uh, Vince McMahon hasn't inducted you to the WWE Hall of Fame yet. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, why, why does that surprise you? Well, I, I well because you know just because you were. I, just because you were Dorothy the Cloud, the original Dorothy the Cloud, not not be, just because of that, but because you know they're also they also induct wrestlers who have been around the business for so long, and and you were in uh, world class championship wrestling, you were in ECW, so I mean you've had a you've had an eclectic type of career more or less, not just one in WWF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, I know. Yeah, but you know what? Yeah, over. Over the roads I've traveled, you know, I've, I've stepped on toes and I've crossed people that, you know, old grudges. You know, I mean, I, I'm grateful that I'm not one of those people or else I'd have a lot of resentment built up in me. But, um, you know, I, uh, I've had issues with people and I, and I forgive people for, for, uh, for doing me wrong. And, uh, you know, I just, I, I think that's just a way of life. You know, I mean, we gotta, we gotta go on and, and, uh, and with a smile on our face, otherwise, uh, you know, um, we don't do ourselves any good. So, you know, I, I just try to, I try to carry on and be happy as, with everything I'm doing, and uh, and do it, do it, do it because I love it, and uh, and and try to make a lot of more friends along the way, you know, and and keep the ones I have. Oh sure, I mean, yeah, I mean, because uh, you know, you, you gotta just keep on keep on trucking, as as the old saying goes, more or less. Yeah. So yeah. so uh. What was your life like before you got into the business, like when you like were growing up and stuff? 
Like, how was that for you when you were growing up before you became a, before you started to love wrestling? Well, I, I, did, I grew up around the business, you know. I, uh, I grew up in the dressing room, you know. Uh-huh. So, um, you know, I, it was just uh, something that kind of second nature, you know. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I had my issues with it, you know, in, in times uh, when I was a teenager. Um, distanced myself from it, but then, uh, but then Jesse Ventura and I became friends when he was wrestling out there in uh, in '77, and uh, he uh, he was my neighbor. Oh. He rented uh, one of my dad's one of my dad's condos, oh, and wow. uh, and he lived right next door to me. So you know we became good friends, and uh, and that's probably what uh, what kind of like steered me back towards the business and wanted to uh, you know. Yeah. Made my mind up that I wanted to break in the business. Yeah. Oh sure, uh, you got managed or trained by your your I believe your dad Tony Moore. No, no, he, he. I told him I wanted to break in. I I really didn't train. I didn't. I got in the ring a couple times and and uh, did some shit, you know. And yeah. uh, you know, and uh, I it, things just came natural to me, and uh, and I just uh, I just. Had had my first match. My first match was a tag match with my dad against the Von Steigers, and uh, and uh, you know, I mean, it, it wasn't a good match by no means, but um, <laughs> it was. Uh, it was. I came out of the blocks, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you first start out, I mean, obviously, you know, you you're not going to be that great, but at least you're at least you show the people what you're capable of doing anyway. Like eventually, you you had more practice, and uh, eventually you be you started to wrestle. And uh, well, what was the first company you ever worked for? Um, Portland Wrestling. Okay. Yeah. Um. Out of yeah, for Don Owens. Um. Worked for him for about a year, part time, two or three days a week, and uh, and I went to uh, the Carolinas for NWA. Okay. And then, uh, uh, how did you get into uh, world class cha- championship wrestling? Because that's a pretty big territory. What it was? Well, you know, back then you, you you went from one to another. The promoters talked. Crockett's who owned the Carolinas. Um, Ole Anderson was booking uh, for Jim Barnett for uh, for TBS. And, you know, Atlanta and Charlotte's only two hundred fifty miles apart. You know, uh-huh. so, territory. So you go from one to another. And, you know, you moved your way around. You could stay busy. Well, what, what was the company that you enjoyed the most in your early days before you went to WWF? Uh, you know what? There was there was there was pros and cons to, to all of them. You know, I um, actually when I first started nineteen, well, when I my first full time territory in nineteen eighty, um, and that for NWA out of out of Charlotte, um, <clears throat> that was probably you know that was busy all the time. You know, and uh, you know, it was good. It was it was a good living. You know, I I had my uh, uh, family and stuff, and I was able to take care of my family, and my wife didn't have to work. And, you know, it was nice. Yeah. Uh, and, um, that, and then you know, I mean, every territory had its pros and cons. I I got good memories from every territory I ever worked at. You know, no matter if I only was there for three four months, um, <clears throat> I uh, I had a great time, man. Yeah, it's too. It's too bad that a lot of the territories aren't around anymore. Because I, I realize, yes, you know, with life, you know, things change and stuff. But I mean, I mean, it's just too bad that there aren't as many as there used to be. You know, because now people who who start out now, you know, have a different aspect on what the what the wrestling's like or what the wrestling world is like. Yeah. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Okay. Buddy. I just need to put me in. <laughs> no, I was just asking you like uh, about the territories, like uh, the fact that there aren't so as many uh, as there used to be, and, and nowadays, what a young wrestler. There are no territories anymore. They're all independents, and, and oh, okay. most of the independents don't. They, you know, they they're uh, they're just fly by nights. Most all of them. You know, I mean, you know, uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna disagree on this show, but you know, I mean, it's it's not what it was, and uh, you know, I uh, I worked for a handful of uh, 
independent guys, uh, promoters that I have respect for, and uh, the rest of them, you know, have a doink outfit and they put it on any jabroni that they know, you know, oh, yeah. that'll work for twenty bucks or free, and uh, thinking they're doing, they're saving money or something, and actually they're killing their own product. But you know, that's all right. I uh, I'm doing well. I don't have to wrestle, but I do it because I love it. I'm doing it this weekend. I'm going to Portland next uh, next month. Uh, Piper, Roddy Piper is uh, producing uh, Portland Wrestling out there again, along with uh, Lynn Denton, the grappler. Uh-huh. And uh, they produce a, a great, they got a great product out there. I'm going out there next month and um, just keeping myself busy. Oh, that's good. Um, Spring, Springfield, Missouri uh, in uh, end of March. Jersey uh, in March 2nd. Um, yeah, I'm all over the place. Yeah, you're still kicking ass, no matter what. <laughs> yeah, still, yeah, still kicking ass, still freaking going. My knees work, everything works. Yeah, you know, it kind of, uh, uh, I was going to mention about the, you know, obviously we were going to talk about the Dark the Clown character and how it all kind of started, but uh, I remember uh, after you agreed to do the interview a couple weeks ago, I, I, I found a picture of Dark the Clown on Google, you know, to Google it up, and I thought, because it was, it's hard for me to tell which is which, you know, and I'm sure it's hard for everybody else to tell, too, so when I put your picture up, I thought that was actually of, of actually, of you, so. Yeah, you know, um, if you know me, it's not hard to tell, but, you know. Yeah. No, that's okay, though. I mean, it, you know, yeah. made a mistake, oh well, it, it happens. <laughs> You know, you know, the, the, actually the thing that um, got mixed emotions about, but, you know, in actuality, you know, the, the character that I created in, in, in Doink the Clown, it, it's the most copied freaking character ever in the history of, of professional wrestling, you know? I mean, uh, <clears throat> um, like, uh, like, just say, for example, um, Owen Hart did uh, the blue, what, who is he, the blue blazer or yep. something? yep. You know, he did that. I mean, I mean, there's all kinds of guys that did different characters in suits, you know, and paint, face, but you know, just to, you know, people maybe knew who, knew who was behind it. But when I, when I took on this thing as this evil clown, Doink, and uh, created it, I mean, I, it became me. I mean, I became Doink. Um, and, uh, and it got over so big, you know, and um, it just, everybody wanted to fucking copy it, you know? Uh-huh. I mean, and even after all these years, after all these years, I mean, let's say it was 20 years ago. Yeah. 20 years ago, Doink was just got into the ring from being in the crowd for three or four months and started, work, started having matches in the ring. That was 20 years ago this month. And, uh, and, and, and it's still used, I mean, it's, it's wasted because wrestling fans now, they, uh, most of them, a lot of them weren't even alive when I created Doink. Yeah. And now they see a Doink at a show and they just see a clown. And, uh, if they were alive when I created it in 92, 93, they would, they would see how this magic I, this freaking thing just clicked and I was able to freaking make this thing work along with Vince McMahon, you know, I mean, and let's face it, yeah. he had the vehicle to freaking do it. So, but, you know, if he was ever, ever have to be really honest and have an interview and talk about Matt Bourne and Doink the Clown, uh-huh. I mean, he, he would, <laughs> and, and be honest, yeah. he would have to say that, you know, that I was Doink. Oh yeah, and Doink, Doink was mad born, but then he tried. When I had my falling out with him, he tried to kill it. You know, he tried to first. He tried to freaking make it work, but you can't clone anybody. You know, yeah, okay. Um, and and he found, he knows that, and but he tried anyway, and then so he just tried to bury it and make it look like a big. It was always just a big joke, where in actuality. I was the hottest thing in the WWF in uh, 93. My merchandise sold more than Hogan's, more than anybody's at that time, you know? And, uh, you know, that's just the way it was. And I'm, I'm very, 
I'm very grateful that I had that opportunity, and I'm very uh, grateful that I was able to make it work. And uh, but I did it because I love uh, because of my love for the wrestling business, and uh, and my love for uh, for <clears throat> just doing just doing it, you yeah. know, just making it work. No, you know, that, I, I had to drive that I had to make it work. And, and, and obviously it did work. And uh, Do you think it kind of started the, the character era, more or less, in wrestling? Like the colorful character eras? Like it seemed like all the wrestlers, whether they were big names behind them or not, were all like character wrestlers rather than just uh, uh, looking like real professional wrestlers. You know what I mean? Well, I think, I think, I think Doink was, a char- it was definitely a character, but it was an attitude as well. I mean, you, you, look, you had the attitude era. Yeah. But you know what? Doink, I, I was I was a precursor to that attitude era because Doink was I was I was Doink because of my attitude. Um, you know, you can't you <laughs> nobody could go out there and freaking have my attitude. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's impossible because I don't even know what my attitude is going to be until a second before my attitude freaking presents itself. You know, and. That's just the way it is, you know. I I never freaking read a script on interviews. I thought about what I was going to say, and then I just fucking went out there and 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 just you know what? I would say a little prayer uh-huh. before I freaking say do an interview before I walk through that curtain on pay per views. But I would just freaking uh, I would just let it roll. Okay. I would think about basic things that I was going to points that I was going to make. But I would never write out a. I never in my life wrote out a script and then memorized it and 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 went out and did it. I went out there and just winged it and freaking off the cuff. And uh, there's a few basic rules that you got to follow when you do something like that. Sure. Like for one, I always put my opponent over first. I always talk my opponent up, no matter who it was. I I said some good things about him. Oh, that's or right. led, or, or, or like uh, facetiously, facetiously said something good about him, and then freaking boom, then I turn around and bury him and put myself over, you know. <laughs> but that's that's the format I I followed. I, I you know, if you're gonna go out there and talk about a match you're having, you got to talk about who you're gonna fight. You gotta you gotta freaking make that character. You gotta make that opponent sound like he's something. Yep. You can't just go out there and say, hey, he's a piece of shit. He's a, he's a punk. He's a pussy. Uh, I'm gonna kick his ass. No, you gotta freaking talk him up. What can you say good about this guy? What has he accomplished? What has he done? And then what? How does that measure up to when you get into the ring? That's that's the points I try to get across. So I talk my opponent up first, and then I freaking talk myself up even more, and then I wind it up and try and freaking make it pop. You know. So who who do you think was the 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 greatest opponent you ever you ever had? Since the said, greatest opponent I ever had. The greatest opponent you ever ever faced. I mean, the, oh man! It doesn't matter well, if it's probably the greatest. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I would probably say um, Savage, okay. Randy Savage. Okay. But I, you know, I was, I, you know, I wanted to work a program with Randy Savage so bad, and I told Vince that, you know, and I did work. I did work with Savage on several occasions, and in Madison Square Garden, um, and Monday Night Raw, um, and we had good matches. And I had great matches with Kurt Henning. I had great matches with uh, Marty Jannetty. I had great matches. I had I had freaking good matches with. I had a great match with the Boss Man. Oh yeah, that I saw. Man. Okay. That I saw on freaking. It's on YouTube now, and. Uh, um, you know, I had great matches with freaking all kinds of guys, you know, that, that you wouldn't think I would, you know, but I just, uh, hey, I just went out there and I never, I never planned a match out. I never choreographed a match in my life. Uh-huh. Um, you know, you can put some spots together and fucking I'll, I'll call them when we're ready to do them out there. But you know what? I just go out there and I just roll, you know, I just freaking go. And I and it just comes it's second nature to me. And guys nowadays they don't know how to do that. They got to have a script. Yeah. And that's too bad. That's really too bad because they're great athletes today. 
They're phenomenal. They're better athletes today than they were in my day, by far. But they lost. <laughs> Just because you're a great athlete doesn't mean that you're freaking. You know, you got you got what it takes to be a great professional wrestler. Because to be a, to be a great professional wrestler, you have to you have to have a, this intangible uh, quality of being able to know what to do and when to do it just by being in a crowd and uh, sensing sensing the people in the crowd, whether it's 200 people or 20,000 people. Uh-huh. You you know, if there's a sense you pick up, you're, there's a sense you know what to do and when to do it. And it's not something that you can choreograph because if you're choreographed it, you're going to do it when it's called for in the choreograph. But you know, I, that's why I can never do that. I will, I will never... If, if I went to work for a promoter and he, he gave me a script and wanted me to freaking follow the script in a match, I would freaking give it back to him and say, I'm sorry I can do that. <laughs> First of all, I wouldn't be able to remember, you know, what spot, what to do, what to do, what to do, when, 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 this, this, this. You know, I, I was never a gymnast. No. I, uh, I took ballet and <laughs> when I was a kid, but I was never a gymnast, so, you know, I'm not really into uh, doing routines I go out there and I uh, I kick ass and uh, and uh, or or simulate it <laughs> well I can kick ass too so there's what a fine line between there's yeah. a real fine line between uh, working it and freaking shooting with it you know so what what type of style would you say for those who, who aren't familiar with your style would you say you're you're like a hardcore wrestler or a technical wrestler or what type of style do you think you you would put yourself in? Uh, it depends on who I'm working with. Okay. I can be hardcore. I can be hardcore and I can be technical. I can be both. I can be hardcore and technical. That's what makes me doink. <laughs> That's what made doink freaking so freaking awesome is because he was such a great technical wrestler. He was a, he was a, he was actually the best wrestler in the WWF at the time. Yeah, wrestler. I mean, you look at my moves. John Cena stole my stole one of my freaking high one of my moves at the finish. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all right. That's a feather. That's that's a compliment to me from John Cena, and I've never met John Cena. I know his dad very well. Uh-huh. His dad's a great guy. But uh, uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny, you know, because uh, nowadays the WWE is all about TV PG, and I, I I really miss the the TV fourteen days just because. You know, lately I've been watching Raw and SmackDown and stuff, and I just like, I'm like, what in the hell are they thinking? You know, <laughs> I miss the days of the hardcore wrestling and stuff. Like, even when you were wrestling or when somebody else is wrestling and they had like a bloody match. Now I'm not saying I like blood all the time, but but I like a good hardcore match. You know, that's just me. <laughs> yeah, I, I I like to work work hardcore matches. In fact, I'm working a hardcore match tomorrow night with uh, Tommy Dreamer. Um, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it, but I got to turn around uh, Saturday night and work uh, work a title match with Tim Storm. Uh, so I'm going to have my work cut out for me. That should be interesting. Because I know that's three minutes that I'm going to be wrestling Dreamer yep. in this brawl. It's going to be a fucking brawl. A fight. <laughs> right out of the blocks, and then I got to come back the next night and work a title match. You know, it is wow. You know what? Um, it's 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 all good, but uh, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be uh, probably recouping until Wednesday or Thursday of next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all right. Hey, it's all part of the business, you know. That's right, and I, yeah, I love it. <laughs> Well, I want to I want to say thank you uh, very much, sir Matt, for let me do this interview with you. It's a real honor to to finally get a chance to speak to you. It's a pleasure, man. Yeah. Hey, what what what? what uh, see, I I got a plug. I got a plug. I got a plug. Freaking everywherlegends dot com. Okay. Uh, check out everywhereLegends dot com. I got all kinds of merchandise on it. I got a shoot interview. I did a six hour shoot interview where we we went behind the scenes and. Um, 
Um, you know, they were talking to me as I was putting my makeup on, and uh, Luke Williams was on the show, one of the Bushwhackers. Uh-huh. And, you know, that camera was set up in the dressing room, and you got to hear the guys talking with each other. Awesome fucking shoot interview. And uh, EverywhereLegends.com. Okay. And uh, EWLegends.com. Check it out. EverywhereLegends.com. I will definitely, check out the, uh, I'll definitely put that below the link. I'll awesome, definitely man. put that below. Awesome. All right. All right, man. And that's well, uh, Sean. Yeah. And God bless you, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on, and and uh, we'll do it again sometime. Yeah. Well, you have a good night, man, and good luck with Tommy Dreamer. Kick his ass. <laughs> I will kick his ass. <laughs> I will, buddy. All right. Check have- out my page, man. Matt the Matt Born uh, Dork Clown. I will have all the freaking results on there, and probably some photos too. All right. Well, we'll have have a good night, man. God bless. All right, buddy. You too, man. And that was Matt Bourne, a.k.a. the original Dork the Clown. Well, he had a lot to say, huh? Uh, definitely an interesting guy to talk to. Uh, somebody, I mean, we could have probably talked for hours upon hours. At least anywhere between 25 and 40 minutes. You know, so they're not too long, but not too short. So they're more detail upon detail. But I appreciate uh, Matt for being on. And uh, thanks to you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you again for another edition of the Frankie Slauson Show with more great interviews to come. Stick around because you never know who will be the next guest on the Frankie Slauson Show on YouTube.com.